Hello everyone, welcome to Capture One in One Minute, where we explore one feature of Capture One to make your workflow better and easier. We're continuing a series talking about exporting, and we're gonna to come to our next important tool, which is the Export Location Tool. So this is saying, once I have exported a variant, where does it go? And let's talk about the thought process here, all right? We have our raw files, and those are by definition not touched inside of Capture One. Capture One is what we call a non-destructive editor, which means that it has no capacity to actually change the original file. So if we want to have any edits, we actually need to create a new file that the edits are applied to. That is referred to as a variant. And so with all of these things we're doing in exporting, we're creating a new file and applying our edits to it. Once we have edited, we can decide with export recipes uh, how many different variations that are repeatable we have. These variants will come in a variety of sizes as we've already explored, and now we're gonna decide where they go. Remember, since this is an exported version and we have the original, the exported variant needs to be used for a particular job. I'm going to put this on the internet. I'm gonna print a canvas print as a present for some family members. I'm gonna make a metal print to hang in my home or whatever. And so the export location should have to do with where I put images that I'm going to do a job with, right? Rather than something I am saving. I never keep a single variant. I export it, use it for a job, and then I trash it because the original and all the edits are still in Capture One. So keep that in mind as you decide your location. For me, the perfect location is always the downloads folder. I know exactly where it is. I can access it immediately from my desktop. I think this this is a convenient place. I've known some people who have folders that are for 12 by 18 prints they wanna make or four by six prints they wanna make or whatever. I get that, that makes sense. So let's take a look at this. The folder is asking the question, where does the variant go? So I can come in here and I can simply choose a folder. I would not use the catalog, uh, the actual catalog, but catalog default being downloads is just where I always put it. Same as original file, I personally think is a bad idea. I don't want the variant to go to the same place where I keep my actual original. I keep my originals inside of an external hard drive, but I want my uh, my variant to be immediately accessible for purposes that uh, are good for me. So I never use original file. I like to use D downloads as my default, but you can come to choose a folder. It's gonna give you this little window, which allows you to browse your particular computer and find the place that is good for you. Next, we have subfolder. So one thing that you can do is decide that when you export, they will automatically go into a subfolder. So for instance, if you had a uh, in a downloads folder or a place for exported images, you could create a subfolder based on the size of the image or, or whatever that you want. We could type a name inside of here if we wanted to, but the name of the subfolder could automatically be populated with aspects of the image. So if we come to the token namer right here, there are a couple things that are particularly useful. If I'm going to be printing some stuff later, I could say the current date, that's fine. Um, the exported date, I could also decide that uh, the some other aspects might be useful, right? The location might be useful. The original file name, maybe that's useful because that is saved. Uh, the recipe format might be incredibly useful because the recipe format is going to say what size it is, what file type it is, and that will put it into a folder that's going to be particularly useful for me. Um, so there's a lot of things in here that, um, are going to give me a subfolder that tells me something about the image so that I can actually use those for whatever purposes is helpful to me. One thing I would always recommend is if I have, for instance, the uh, recipe format, or in my case, the recipe name, once I have that, that might be a good thing for me to decide to save as a custom preset, right? recipe name and save that so that if I want to use this subfolder over and over again, I have it saved right here. Anyway, I'm gonna delete that for the moment because I don't want to change the particular recipe I'm on, but that's something that we can do and then that is still saved, which is great. Next is existing files. So what happens if 
an image is being put into a location and it has the same name as something else, what will happen? We can either add a suffix, so one, two, three, four, just adding in a number so that they're differentiated. I can overwrite the original or I could not actually uh, make a variant of that file. I could skip it if I think that they would be the same. Those are the options we have there. It's then going to give me a sample path so I know exactly where the images are going so I can find this location. And lastly, how much space is left inside of that hard drive where I'm putting these. So if I'm going to be exporting into something that's running out of space, I'll know about it. All right. Anyway, that's the export location tool for exporting images. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.